Absorbent in yellow and porous is he. 7.4 mid segments. Let's see, we've already done some mid segments and we're going to now use it in proportions. All right, let's jump into a triangle proportionality theorem. If three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then, the, um, then they divide the transversals proportionally. All right, so we have three parallel lines and then there's two transversals going through them. So we haven't done two transversals yet. So here we have it. Then all of these little segments are proportional, like this segment is proportional to that segment. This segment is proportional to that segment. So we got some proportionality stuff going on. All right, let's see how we can do some examples with that. Here's the same picture. You have to fill in the blank by looking at the proportions. All right, they are saying that AB over AC should equal DE over, what do you think? This whole thing, DF. All right, so that's how they want you to set up the proportions. So you kind of just visualize what is happening. B, uh, C, B, this little piece right here, over uh, B, E, this piece, is equal to C, A, this long one. And it looks like we can use this one. So kind of just match up the sections, A, D. Ooh, this last one doesn't even have um, certain options, but let's see if we can figure it out using the patterns. A, C, this long one, over B, C, this short one. Hmm. Then we can use, actually there's a few choices, but I think, how about this long one and this short one? D, F, and E, F. All right, so just matching up the sections that are proportional. Okay. Oh, let's throw in some numbers and see what happens. Oh, there's a 4, a 6, an X, and a 13. Let's see what we can do with that. Set up the proportion 4 over 6, X over 13. And then again, there's lots of ways to set up the proportion. You can do 4 over X and then 6 over 13. So you can um, make it proportional this way, or you can make it proportional that way. So both ways works, because in the end, you'll get the same answer. Cross multiply and solve, you should get x equals 8.6. <clears throat> All right, here's another one, this one. Notice we have these little arrow thingies, which means parallel. As soon as we have those parallel, then we can use the proportionality theorem. All right, and again, there's lots of ways to set up the proportion, but here's how I decided to set it up. I compare the 25 with the x plus 7, and then the 30 over the 6. Cross multiply, solve it out, use a little bit of pre-algebra, you should get x equals negative 2. Not too bad. This one they are asking if the lines are parallel. So there are no little arrows, which means I don't know, are the lines parallel or not? Um, but they give you these numbers. Well, let's set up the numbers to see if they work out. I decided to do 18 and compare it to the 35, and then the eight compared to the 14. What happens when we cross multiply? If we cross multiply, those numbers are not equal, which means that these are not parallel. If they did equal, then it would be yes parallel, but they are not. Mid-segment. So um, the mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So for example, let's say the middle of AB is somewhere here, and then the middle of AC is somewhere here. Well, if I connect them, oh, look at there. That is called the mid segment. And there's mid segments all the way around too. What if I, 
wanted to find the middle of BC with AB, that's its mid segment. <clears throat> or here's the third mid segment. Oh, that one's kind of hard to see, but the middle of AC with the middle of BC. So there's actually three mid segments in every triangle. Let's do a mid segment theorem. The mid or the segment connecting the midpoints of two of the sides of the triangle is parallel to the third side and is half as long. So let's take this mid segment, DE. It turns out that DE is parallel to AC. Not only that, DE is half as long as AC. So there it is. DE is parallel to AC, and then DE is um, equal to one half the length of AC. All right, that's the mid segment theorem. So let's use some of that um, in an example. All right, so this one is a triangle, and it tells you that the mid segment is XY. All right, knowing that, let's come up with um, some answers. I give you there's a 4 here, there's a 65 degrees, there's a 35 degrees, there's a 6 here, there's a 10 in here, so there's a lot of information already given. Let's see if we can use the theorems to find BX. Where is BX? This piece right here. Well, if it is the mid segment, it should be the same as this piece. So 6. Got it. BC. Well, to go from here all the way to here, I mean, this must be 4, so BC must be 8. Got it. AC. Let's see. AC is this long side. Here's how we can use the theorem. If this is 10, to get that side, you just double it. 20. The measurement of angle C. This is angle C. Well, we have to go back way back in the triangles chapter. The triangle sum theorem says all of these have to add up to 180. So that must be 80 because 35 and 65 add up to 100. All right, last one for the day. Let's use a little bit of algebra. So we're given again the mid segment, MN, and we have to solve for now X, Y, and Z. All right, let's do X first. Um, it looks like there's an X here and an X here. So all you gotta do is set them equal to each other. Use a little bit of pre-algebra. X equals 11. Here's Y over here. We got this here as well. Set them up, use a little bit of pre-algebra, subtract 19 from both sides, multiply both sides by four, y equals 12. And then the last one, z, is the easiest one if we use the theorem. Uh, if that's seven, z must be doubled. z equals 14. All right, so that's all we have. Go ahead and do the homework.